let's get started right into McRepertory and reference works. I'm going to go ahead and start with McRepertory. And here you can see the, the opening screen. Basically, uh, we've got two programs. We've got McRepertory and we've got reference works. Uh, McRepertory is a repertorial software application. And I'll, I'll show you how to use that and the various things that it can do. And then we've got uh, ReferenceWorks, which is a, a type of a material medical software. The two are integrated and are capable of transmitting and transferring information between them. Uh, so I will also focus on that uh, probably in the more advanced session. If you ever want to toggle between open applications, uh, you can do so by holding the Alt key down on your keyboard and while holding down the Alt key, hitting the Tab key at the same time. So you can see if I hit Alt and then Tab, I can toggle between open applications and now you can see I find myself in reference works. And if I want to go back to McRepertory, again, I hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and then tabbing, clicking on the Tab key, I can go back to McRepertory. Of course, I can always go to the bottom here and click on the application that I want, but this is an easy keyboard way to essentially uh, find what you're looking for. Okay, so let's uh, review the opening window. Uh, we've got um, the repertory currently opened over here, and on the left-hand side, we've got what we call the tool palette. And the tool palette uh, has a number of different items. You can see at the very top here, this is the, the item for the repertory. If I actually close the window for the repertory by clicking on the X in the upper right-hand corner of this screen here, if I want to reopen that repertory, I can bring my mouse over to this little icon in the tool palette and I can click on it and again it will open up the window which contains that particular repertory. I've also got a number of different clipboards. I've got clipboards A, B, C, and D and I've also got clipboards 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, actually A, B, C, and D are essentially working in conjunction with each other and 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6 are working in conjunction with each other. So in other words, you can't open A and B at the same time. You can integrate the rubrics which are contained in A and B and C and D, but you can't open A and B and C and D separately from each other, but you can open A separately from 2 or B separately from 3. And this allows you to transfer rubrics back and forth between these two, dif uh, two different organizations of clipboards. Now some of you might be wondering why would we even have different clipboards? Well, the advantage of having different clipboards is it allows us to group our rubrics into different categories. So for example, I could put all of my mind symptoms into clipboard A and I could put all of my general physicals into clipboard B and I could put my skin symptoms into clipboard C and my urinary symptoms in clipboard D and my musculoskeletal symptoms in clipboard 1 and my food desires and aversions in clipboard 2 and I can always repertorize at any time all of the rubrics and all of the clipboards looking at the totality of the characteristic symptoms in the case but by virtue of the fact that I've grouped the rubrics into different categories I can basically analyze the case in a variety of different ways. Perhaps when I look at the totality of the characteristic symptoms of my case, none of the remedies at the top of my repertorization really stand out as ones that seem to fit the case appropriately. So maybe I say to myself, well, you know, really the center of pathology in this case is the urinary symptoms. And by virtue of the fact that I've grouped the rubrics into one clipboard, just under the urinary symptoms, I can select just that particular clipboard and look at the remedies that cover just the urinary symptoms or the urinary and mind symptoms or the urinary and general physicals or any combination of clipboards that I would like. Below that you'll see a little icon here. If I click on this, it opens up the patient information 
uh, we'll be reviewing that throughout these uh, various sessions. And if I want to close that, I can click on the little X over here. And then right below that one, if I click over here, you can see I've got a place where I can type in notes. Uh, the notes, the graphs, the clipboards can all be saved to a patient. And you can save multiple <clears throat> graphs, multiple notes, all organized by the date uh, that you save them so that you can go back and refer to them very easily. Uh, below that, we have a little icon with a little bar graph. This is for opening up the graph or analysis window. We don't have any rubrics yet, so I won't bother to, uh, to click on that. And then right below that, we have a little icon. This opens up information about uh, families is not really a correct terminology here because it's more than just families. Family, families is a specific level within a taxonomical scheme. Uh, but this includes all kinds of different ways by which we can group remedies together. Uh, it could be miasms, it could be a family grouping, it could be a larger taxonomical grouping like an order, uh, or even a, a smaller grouping like a tribe. So it can be any way by which you group uh, remedies together. And these graphs, which we'll look at in the more advanced uh, sessions of, uh, of the training, uh, will actually be interactive with the graphs and analysis that we have in the software. Below that, we have this little icon with a plus and a minus. This is where we can uh, combine or eliminate rubrics. This is, can also be done from the keyboard as well. Uh, I actually prefer the keyboard way, so I'll probably show you that first. And then below that, you've got a little icon with a key, and this will open up your keynotes. So uh, at any time, you can click on any of these. If I wanted to open up the keynotes, for example, I could just click on the key, and it's going to open up. Uh, I actually have Berkey's Materia Medica set as my default. That can be changed if you want, but I currently have Berkey set up as my default. It has a lar very large number of remedies, so I've got a good chance of finding what I'm looking for. And you can see it starts with the very first remedy alphabetically. And again, if I want to close this window, I can do so. I can also resize these screens. If I take my mouse and bring it to the bottom right-hand corner of any window, I can change the, the size of this window, and I can also move these windows around to fit whatever I would like. If I want to, uh, for example, make the repertory window a little bit smaller, I can click on it, bring my mouse to the bottom right-hand corner, and drag that over and uh, size it appropriately. And again, I can open up as many different windows as I want and exchange information between them as is appropriate for whatever I am doing in the program. I'll go ahead and close the, um, the keynote window right now. Uh, <clears throat> And now, I also want to show you that in the bottom right-hand corner of many of the windows, uh, you'll find uh, some very consistent icons. So for example, I'm now in the uh, what's called the, the repertory window, and the default repertory I currently have opening is called the Complete 2013 Repertory. But I can switch very quickly from one repertory to another. So if I bring my mouse to the bottom right-hand corner to this little icon here uh, where it says, uh, if I bring my mouse over it, it says open repertory, and I click on it, you'll see that I have a number of different repertories that are available to me, and I can switch between these repertories. Maybe I decide, you know, I don't want to use the complete 2013. I would prefer to go back and use the 19... Uh, 16 Kent's repertory. So I could click on Kent's repertory and now you'll see I'm in Kent's repertory and I can see the icons representative of the various chapters of that particular repertory. If I click back on it again, I could switch to a different repertory. I'll go back and select the complete 2013. You'll also see that there's a number of icons here. Uh, one that's for going back in the program. Uh, one for going forward. I, I haven't done anything, so I can't go forward yet. And then I've also got one that's got like a little footpath, and if I click on that, that actually shows me a history of all of my most recent actions. So I always have a, I always have a record of what I've done, and that way I can very quickly go back to a previous rubric that I was looking at perhaps a few moments ago, or even maybe an hour ago, based on uh, how many how much information I was uh, moving through uh, over a period of time. Okay, uh, <clears throat> now uh, you also uh, uh, want to know about a few very important tools that you're going to see coming up all the time. Uh, let's actually get right into the repertory so I can show this to you. So there's a number of different ways of getting into the repertory. One way is to simply click on any of the chapters. And by the way, you can change 
the way these chapters look. So for example, if I don't like this little pictogram here and I want to change it, I can hold the Alt key down on my keyboard and click on this little brain here and you'll see I get a different little picture and I can click again and get a different one and a different one and a different one and I can choose any of a number of different possible little pictograms uh, until I find the one that I want. And this is true for all of the various little icons that are in here. So you can really tailor this program to look the way that you want. Now let's say I want to go into the uh, mind section. Well, maybe I don't even know that it's the mind. The way I can find out the names of all of these different chapters is by holding down the spacebar key on my keyboard. So if I hold down the spacebar key, immediately you see that I can now tell that the first icon is the mind chapter, and then vertigo, and then head, and then eyes, vision, ears, hearing, nose, smell, face, and so on and so forth. As soon as I let go of the spacebar key, you can see that those names disappear. Actually, holding down the spacebar key is something that you will find useful throughout the program. Uh, whenever you want to show remedies, whether you're in the uh, repertory window or you're in a clipboard, you want to show the remedies, you simply hold down the spacebar key and the remedies will appear. Let me go ahead and show you that. So uh, one way to get into the repertory is by taking your mouse and clicking on the particular icon that I want to go into representative of that particular chapter. So let's say, for example, I want to go into the mind chapter. I could click on mind. And now I'm going to resize this window a little bit. And now here I am in the mind chapter. And uh, if I want to get back out of the mind chapter, I can click on it and go back out again. Okay, so I can click on it and go into it, click on it and go back out of it. I can also, if I know the name of the a particular chapter that I want to get into, I can simply start to type in the first few letters of the chapter which I would like to go to. So let's say, for example, I want to go to the mind chapter. So I simply type in MI on my keyboard and then I hit enter or if you're using a Mac computer it would be return and now you can see that again I've now in the mind chapter. You'll also notice that to the left of the little pictogram where it says mind there's a little arrow and if I click on it you can see that right from here I can also switch to different chapters. In other words I can just click here and I can go to any other chapter in the repertory. Now, once I'm in uh, a particular chapter here, uh, then I can go ahead and hit my spacebar key, and you'll notice that when I do that, all of the remedies will now appear. So hitting the spacebar key is very useful for, for showing the remedies when you're not automatically displaying those remedies in your view. And the same is true for your clipboards as well. If you've got rubrics in any of your various clipboards and you hold down the spacebar key, you will notice that those... Uh, um, that those remedies will then appear. Uh, also, it's important to know that you can always right-click in different locations. So there's three things I would recommend that you be aware of. One is the spacebar key, which pulls up the remedies, or in the cases of the chapters, shows you the chapter names. The second is that the uh, bottom left-hand corner icon, these I this icon over here is always the icon for a, a limiting, a li limiting information. And if I click on it now, you can see that I can limit my repertory or my analysis or my uh, rubrics or really anything where I have one of these little windows. I can limit it to all kinds of different information. I could limit it to just the animals or just the minerals or just the Loganacea or various miasms according to Rajan Sankaran or um, maybe just italic and stronger remedies, or even certain specific authors. If I click on authors over here, you can see I can go through and click and select certain authors that I would like to limit my repertory to. Uh, we'll be going through all of these features in more detail later, but just so you have a sense that the bottom left-hand corner icon is always the one that allows you to limit information in your program. I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel now to close out of this. And if I do, by the way, limit, let me just show you what happens. If I click here, let's say I limit to um, whatever, let's just say to, and by the way, you can also limit to individual remedies that I can select or individual family groupings. So I can go in there and, and click on this and, and limit to individual remedies or family groupings. But let's say I just limit to drug remedies by clicking here. Um, when I do that, you'll notice that this little green button over here now became red. So whenever you see this little button here is red, that means that you have somehow limited 
this window that you're working in to some type of information. It could be only remedies in degrees three and four. It might be only certain remedies associated with a botanical grouping. It might be only certain authors that you selected. It might be certain words that you want to uh, look at. Uh, whenever you see that little red button there, that means that you have some type of limitation to the window. If you want to undo that limitation, you simply bring your mouse over to the little red button and you click on it, and now you've eliminated that particular that particular limitation that was there. Uh, again, you can always try right-clicking in different places, but these are the three things I would try to remember. The spacebar key, the right-clicking, and that the bottom left hand corner icon is always the item for limiting your uh, program. Okay, let's go ahead now and look at some of the pull down menus in the program so we can become familiar with the overall functioning of the software. The first one that I'd like to look at is preferences and if you've got your program opened up on your laptops right now and you can see it at the same time, I'd like you to actually go ahead and make sure that your preferences are similar to the ones that I've got set up. I think for most purposes these preferences will suit you best. So if you go ahead into the upper left hand corner and you click on the file pull down menu and you go down about two thirds of your way down to where it says preferences and you left click on that you'll see these are various preferences that are available to you in the software, various options that are available to you in the software. Now the first one I want you to notice is this one here that says use copy protection device or use this computer only. Uh, this is a very nice feature which allows you to not have to transport your your key or dongle around with you. If you select use this computer only, then you don't need to have the key in the USB uh, drive of your computer. You can simply put it away in your desk drawer or in a safe or wherever else you'd like to put it and uh, you don't have to worry about it any longer. Uh, it, but of course you won't be able to use that key on any other computer. It will only The program will only work on this computer. If at a certain point you decide I've loaded the, the software onto a different computer and I'd like to go use it on that computer, you'll have to come back here and you'll have to click on use copy protection device and then you'll be able to move the key and use it on any other computer that you've downloaded the application to. Uh, below that you'll see it says repertory lock eye composition should be selected, uh, show titles under mouse which allows you to see uh, when your mouse uh, roll over your mouse over a various icon what it is. And then uh, for the default I don't believe that you have this one selected it's called double click open rubrics and I'd like you to check this one off. Uh, I think it's important because it allows you to select a rubric without having that rubric move up in your structure, up in the in the repertory window. And th that allows you to select rubrics and then simply hit enter or return depending on whether you're using a Windows or Mac computer and add that rubric to one of your clipboards. Uh, <clears throat> italicized remedies are underlined, that's really a matter of aesthetic preferences. And then right below that you'll see it says grade color. If you click on this uh, you can see that you can actually change the colors of the various grades in your repertory. I actually changed mine so I made the bold italics this kind of maroon color, uh, the bold black color, the italics blue, the plain type uh, gray, what's called conditional light gray, uh, and I made the authors gray. But you can change all these. You can click on this and you can change it to whatever colors you would like. Uh, the four degrees is reflective actually of the four degrees well, at least to a certain degree, the four degrees that you would find in the therapeutic pocketbook repertory. Bunninghausen, who was the creator of that repertory, was the first individual who uh, created degrees in the construction of a repertorial database. I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel. You can go back and change these colors to suit your own needs whenever you would like. Okay. Uh, there's also a feature here for reducing the author's value. If you would like to reduce a particular author's value uh, and you feel that the author is not as reliable, you can go back and do that. I think it's more of an advanced feature and we'll cover that later on. And then you've got um, the option to for printing where you can print the first page only or more pages. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click and cancel to get out of that. I think the most important thing here again is uh, making sure that you have double click opens rubrics selected. Okay. So I'll go ahead and click on I cancel. I'd also like to show you that the program is very customizable. You can really uh, set up this program to suit your aesthetic needs. So if I click on file here, 
and I go down to about three quarters of the way down to where it says backgrounds and I click on backgrounds you can see that I can really change the way uh, my program looks and by the way when I open up the backgrounds it's always going to be uh, linked to whichever window I currently have open so I'm actually in the repertory rubrics window and that's why it lists under window repertory rubrics if I had been in a different window uh, I, I would have a different one of these items automatically selected okay um, so I can change this you know I could make this pretty funky looking if I wanted but you can see that really doesn't make a lot of sense uh, yellow submarine uh, I don't want to change it to that. Uh, so I can, you know, I can really, uh, I could change anything to any color I want. Uh, and you can go ahead and around and play with this later on. Uh, golf green. Uh, that's not actually too bad. Maybe I'll leave it for, like that for now. Uh, and then I can go down to uh, repertory specs here. And here again, I can change all kinds of different colors, background colors, uh, selection highlight colors, font words and remedy colors, cross-reference colors, mouse rollover colors. Really, it's extremely customizable. You can you can make it look exactly the way that you want. I'll go ahead and click on cancel here, and I guess I'll I'll keep this. Uh, this color here uh, for now. Um, nice to have a little bit change of pace. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's now review some of the uh, the pull down menus at the top here. We've got file, edit, graph, search, rubrics, window, and help. I would like to, for everybody to be aware that if you click on the help pull down menu, you do have the complete Mac, Mac repertory manual as the very first choice there. It's a fairly comprehensive manual. It's what I used to learn most of the features and functions in McRepertory and ReferenceWorks and you can go through it and read and it gives you all kinds of different examples and uh, uh, it's, it's really quite uh, thorough and comprehensive. And then below that you have a number of items which are actually, uh, actually videos. These are all different videos that were created by David Kent Workington. David Kent Workington was the uh, originator, founder of McRepertory and you can watch these various videos. They range anywhere from about five or six minutes upwards to I think about 20 or 30 minutes depending on the on the topic and you can go ahead and watch these and they're very instructive and, and give you some insight to how to use these various aspects of the software. You've also got a little window for keyboard shortcuts, uh, the remedy names and author names so if you want to find the, uh, the names of the remedies and the author names, this is where you would find it and you can also go directly to the internet to the Synergy website to HomeoNet uh, and to various other types of information about the program. To the left of the help pull down menu, you've got another menu called Windows. And if you click on Windows, you can see that there are keyboard commands uh, in addition to the tool palette on the left hand side that can be used to open up various windows. I love this. I love these keyboard commands because once you learn them, you can move through the program you know, quite a bit more quickly. So, for example, if I want to go to, I want to open up clipboards A through D, these these four up here, or clipboards one through six, I can do so by typing uh, Control Two. If you've got a Windows computer, I'm currently uh, using McRepertory and ReferenceWorks on a Windows computer. But if you've got a, a Macintosh computer, you would substitute Command for Control, and that will always be the case. If I say Control, and you're using a Macintosh computer you should know that that means for a Macintosh computer that means command. I can open up the keynotes by typing control 4, I can open the remedy graph by typing control or command 5, the family graph control command 6, the elimination button over here uh, uh, control or command 7, the patient's chart control or command 8, and the tool palette in general uh, control uh, or command 9 and then the notes uh, control or command 0 so this is for me very handy and not too difficult to learn I think I'll just show you uh, quickly how you could use it uh, let's say I want to open up the repertory or I mean the uh, keynotes I type control 4 and there I've got my keynotes if I want to open up my graph I could type in control 5 I don't have any rubrics yet so there's nothing there but that's how I would do it okay all right very good so let's um uh, let's look now at the rubrics pull down menu and this is the one that's to the left of the windows pull down menu and this one is actually quite important because it's the one that uh, allows you to decide how you want your repertory to be set up okay so if I click on it you can see that currently I've got no remedies selected but I could choose main remedies which would mean just the uh, bold and bold italic remedies okay um, or I could choose uh, all the remedies in alphabetical order 
or I could choose all the remedies alphabetically. This is normally how we see it in a particular uh, repertory that's printed. Uh, I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see this. Okay, uh, And again, you can see the color changes that I've made to the program. Now, this might be the way you want to look through it, but uh, the, the problem with this particular view is that, you know, if I'm scrolling down, you see I've got to scroll through a lot of information if I've got a big rubric, and, you know, I may not see things as quickly or readily as I would if I have a more limited amount of information, if I have the remedies not showing, for example. So again, I can go back up here and I can switch to no remedies. And I can always, if you look here under the rubric pull down menu, you can see it says control R. And the control R allows me to toggle back and forth between no remedies, main remedies, and all remedies. Okay, so let me just show you that. Again, if you've got a Macintosh computer, it would be command. So I'll do control R, and now I've got my main remedies, all my remedies all the remedies as they would uh, be presented in a printed book, and then back to just the uh, particular rubrics. I can do the same thing with um, rub subrubrics as well. Right now I've got all subrubrics showing, but I could do no subrubrics. And you can see if I do no subrubrics, I've only got the primary rubrics showing up. And again, if you look under the pull down menu, you can see the keyboard command for this is control Y. So the control Y allows me to do the same thing as well. I can toggle between uh, showing just the primary subrubrics, the first level of subrubrics, or all the subrubrics, or no subrubrics. Let me show you. Again, it's control or command, depending on whether you're using a Windows or Mac application. So control Y, now you can see I have the uh, primary uh, rubric, the primary subrubrics. Control Y again, I have all the subrubrics, and control Y again brings me just back to the first level of rubrics. And the same thing is true for the um, <clears throat> for the cross-references. I can show the cross-references by typing control U. If I type control U again, the cross-references disappear. Let me go ahead and show you that. I type control uh, U, and now you can see I'm showing all the cross-references for the uh, particular rubrics that are showing, whether they're primary rubrics or first-level subrubrics or all the subrubrics. And again, if I want those to disappear, I type control or command U, and they disappear. You'll also notice that to the left of each of the rubrics, you can have uh, various things shown. You can have a plus showing up, you can have nothing showing up, or you can have an asterisk. If you have a plus, that means that there are no remedies in this particular word, morning. In other words, it's got to be morning aggravates or morning ameliorates or something like that. Morning by itself doesn't mean anything, but there the, are subrubrics underneath, as indicated by the plus, but morning itself has no remedies in it. Uh, if you see, uh, for example, an asterisk, that means that there are subrubrics under autumn, but uh, and that there are 14 remedies in autumn, but that uh, uh, there are also remedies in that rubric as well. So if you've got a plus, it means that this has no remedies in it. Uh, if it's got an asterisk, it means it does have remedies and subrubrics. And if there's not, nothing at all, it means there's no subrubrics whatsoever. Again, if we click on the rubrics pull down menu, we can remove the remedy count as well. And you can see now I don't even show the remedy count. I would recommend, however, that you show the remedy count. It's generally a good idea to show uh, the number of remedies that are contained in the particular rubrics. And I can also show, if I'm showing the remedies, uh, the author abbreviations or the author numbers. If you remember, you can find out what those numbers or abbreviations are by clicking on the help pull down menu and going down about two thirds of the way to where it says remedy names or author names. Okay, there are other um, items here. There's the search pull down menu, there's the graph, there's the edit, and there's all the items located under file. But we're not going to review those right now. I think these were the most important ones. The other ones will come up in future sessions that we conduct. I will be doing many sessions over the year uh, to teach people how to really thoroughly know how to use this program so they can uh, apply it in their study and practice homeopathy most effectively. At this point, I think it would be good for us to learn a little bit about how to actually navigate the repertory itself. Once you're in a particular section and you want to go to a particular rubric in that section, you simply start to type in the first few letters of the rubric that you're looking for. 
So for example, let's say I'd like to go to the rubric fear of high places. Well, I know I've got to go to fear. So I'm just going to type in uh, on my keyboard F-E-A or, or F-E-A-R and as soon as I type in F-E-A-R you notice that I now find myself at the rubric fear with 778 remedies and I can see listed alphabetically all of the other primary rubrics which are listed underneath fear. Now I want to fear of high places. I've got two ways of getting to this. I've got to move that fear up to the top, to the right of where the mind pictogram is. I can either click on the word fear here and that will move it to the top or I can use the right arrow key on my keyboard. If you look at the bottom right hand corner of your keyboard you'll see that there's an upward arrow key, a downward arrow key, a left arrow key and a right arrow key. If I hit my right arrow key the fear will now go to the top and now I will see below all of the various subrubrics to fear or fears that are contained in the complete 2013 repertory. I wanted fear of high places. So um, what I could do now is I could just type in the word high, H-I-G, and immediately it will go to high places. So very quickly I can find myself high places if I want to, I can see there's a little asterisk to the, um, to the left of high places which means there are sub rubrics. If I'd like to go and see those sub rubrics again I would hit the right arrow key on my keyboard and now I would go uh, bring high places to the top and now I can see that there are a number of sub rubrics uh, uh, throw himself down lest he, uh, higher than one can jump uh, and push by someone behind him might be. Uh, if I want to, don't want any of these rubrics and I would like to go back upward a level, I'd like to bring the high places back down again, I would simply hit the left arrow key on my keyboard. So I hit the left arrow key on my keyboard and by the way I could click on my mouse on those particular places and I will go back. But this is just uh, for me a nice way to do it using the keyboard. It allows me to move more quickly through the program. So right arrow key brings it up, left arrow key brings it down. Right arrow key brings it up, left arrow key brings it down. Okay, now uh, remember earlier I mentioned to you that you could uh, change from one repertory to another. And one of the very nice features uh, in McRepertory is that when you change from one repertory to another, if possible, it will stay at the same rubric you were at. So let me show you how that works. Remember in the bottom right hand corner of your window, you've got this little icon with a little kind of little book look book look, uh, looking item on it and if I click on it it shows me all the different repertories that are available to me. Well maybe I would like to go to Kent's repertory. So I bring my mouse over to where it says Kent's repertory. I left click and now it brings me over to Kent's repertory and you'll notice that I'm now in Kent's repertory and I'm at the same place. I'm in fear of high places. Isn't that interesting that in Kent's repertory fear of high places only has four remedies whereas if I now click again in the bottom right hand corner and go back up to the complete 2013 repertory I see that in the complete 2013 there are 48 remedies in that particular repertory. So again very easy to do I can move around very quickly if I right click here I can move between the different repertories I can add rubrics from different repertories into my clipboards and I can also click on this little arrow over here and switch to any other chapter that I would like. If I want to go to ears, I click here and I'm now in ears. If I click here again, I can go to face or whatever I would like. Uh, if I want to uh, simply use my keyboard to do that, I would hit the left arrow key one more time and it would bring me to the very top level. So there's a, again, there's a number of different ways by which I can move around in the repertory. If I want to go back into the mind section, if I forgot what the uh, names of the repertories are, I hit the space bar key on my keyboard. I see that the first one is mine so I type in MI on my keyboard and then I hit enter or return and it brings me back into the mind chapter. Now this way of searching for rubrics is based on a knowledge of the structure of the repertory. And uh, I really have to kind of know uh, what is the primary rubric, uh, what is this, the second rubric and what is the sequencing of the sub rubrics to find what I'm looking for. Maybe I don't know uh, where a particular rubric is located. Maybe my patient feels extremely embarrassed and I'd like to find 
uh, all the rubrics in this particular section. Now, if I look at the bottom here, you can see there's a little little window uh, with a little magnifying glass to the left. <coughs> and if I click on the little uh, little downward arrow key here, you see I have a number of options. I can choose match any word, match all words, begins with, anywhere, whole word, show matching rubrics, show all rubrics. Uh, so generally speaking, match any word, begins with, and showing matching rubrics is a good place to start. We can talk about why you might want to use some of these other ones at a later time. But uh, let's say, for example, I want to find uh, all the rubrics in the mind chapter, that's where I am right now, uh, for the word embarrassed. So I'll just start to type in embarrassed, E-M-B-A-R-R-A-S, oops, I spelled it wrong, <laughs> R-R-A-S, S, okay, and as soon as I type that in, uh, the program will then find for me all of the words anywhere in the mind section of the complete 2013 repertory which have the word embarrassed in it or at least the first few letters that I typed okay you can see those letters are now highlighted so I can find uh, um, anger embarrassment aggravates dreams of embarrassment uh, the general rubric for embarrassment uh, um, irritability with embarrassment and uh, talking when embarrassed okay uh, I can take any of these items and I can bring them over uh, to my clipboard by simply clicking on the item and then once I clicked on it dragging it over to the clipboard I want I can put it into a B C or D one two three four five or six I can just simply click uh, on it, hold the mouse button down and drag it over to the one I want. I'm going to click and put this in A over here. I can also use my keyboard to put rubrics into my clipboards as well. So let's say I, I've already put in this first one here and I want to put in a few others and I want to do them all at the same time. Well what I can do is I can click let's say on embarrassment and then if I hold the control key if I've got a Windows computer or command key if I've got a Macintosh computer and now I click um, on this one here you can see that both of these are now selected and I'll all go ahead and click on this one and this one and this one I've now by holding down the control key I've uh, selected these various items if I hold the control key down it allows me to select or command key it allows me to select or deselect items without affecting what is already selected. Let me repeat that again. When you hold the control or command key down, it allows you to select or deselect items without affecting what is already selected. So now I've selected a number of different items. If I want to get rid of I say, oh, you know what? I actually don't want uh, embarrassment in the presence of strangers. I hold the control or command key down on my keyboard and I click on it and you can see it's now no longer highlighted. Once I've got these various items selected, I could click and drag them over to any clipboard that I would like or I could simply hit enter or return on my keyboard and those rubrics will then go into what is presently the default clipboard which is clipboard number A so I'll simply hit enter and all of those rubrics have now been added to clipboard number A. Now I can either click on clipboard number A or if I remember that the keyboard command is control or command 2 I can type that and now you will see that I have in my clipboard A all of the rubrics uh, which I either dragged in or that I selected with my mouse holding the control or command key down and then hit return or enter to put them in. So when, you, uh, when you're in your clipboards, when you're in your repertory and you've selected a particular rubric and you hit return or enter, that rubric will then go in to the default clipboard. If I uh, wish to uh, put it in a different clipboard, I simply click on the clipboard that I want over here and that then becomes the default clipboard in which the rubrics will go. So you simply click on the clipboard you want the rubrics to go into and that's the clipboard that they will go into. Okay, very good. So uh, <clears throat> you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner of your screen that this little red button is now, the, there was a green button before, is now red. And that's because we've limited the repertory to only the rubrics that have the word, have words that's, that, that have the letters E-M-B-A-R-R-A-S-S. -S. If I want to re eliminate that, I simply click on the little uh, red icon here and that will clear that out. Okay? 
All right. Uh, I can notice now I'm under embarrassment uh, aggravate ailments from. If I left arrow click, you can see I go back up to the uh, top top level of the mind repertory. Now you got to be careful. You got to know what's up here because when you click down here and you type in words, it's only going to be searching in the section that's listed up here. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I type in, for example, F-E-A-R for fear, and I hit the right arrow key and I've got fear, and now I go to the bottom and I type in the word embarrassed, E-M-B-A-R-R-A-S-S, -S, okay, you'll see only one rubric comes up because there's only one rubric in the fear section that's got the word embarrassed. So I got to be careful that when I use this little feature down here that I'm uh, conscientious about making sure that I'm, I'm uh, in the section that I want to be uh, limiting my search to. Okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead now on the bottom here and click on the little red icon and clear that out. And I'm going to hit my left arrow key here to go back up to the uh, top level. Okay, so we put some rubrics into clipboard number A or clipboard letter A, uh, and I can click on that and uh, uh, see what's in there. If I want to delete anything, I simply click on it and hit the uh, delete or backspace key on my keyboard and it's gone. So that's very easy to do. If I want to put rubrics into a different clipboard, uh, what I could do is I could click on the letter B here, for example. Okay, and let's go ahead and um, let's put a few rubrics in here. Okay, I'm going to click on the uh, rubric here. Let's put in, uh, it doesn't matter what we put in. I'm going to put in foppish. Foppish means somebody who, who dresses very um, elegantly or uh, kind of like what they call an old term dandy. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to hit uh, enter on my keyboard. And as soon as I do that, you can see that foppish was now added to clipboard B. And I go ahead and click on uh, dispose to frown. I'll select that one and I'll hit enter. And by the way, this is why I asked you to select double click because now if you don't select double click and I click on these rubrics, they automatically go to the top. Here, I have to double click on the rubric for it to go to the top. This way I can click on a rubric and hit return or enter and have it go into the clipboard that I want. Let me add a couple more here. I'll uh, select this one here, finery, uh, luxurious clothing wants, and I'll hit enter, put that one in. And uh, let's put in some in Clipboard C as well. I'll click on Clipboard C here. And uh, let's click on uh, Friends Aversion 2 on, over here. And again, I'll hit Enter or Return. And uh, Friendship Deceived, and I'll hit Enter or Return. Okay? So now I can click on Clipboard A, and I've got my rubrics. I can click on Clipboard B, I've got some rubrics. And I can click on Clipboard C, and I've got some rubrics. What if I want to see all of these rubrics at the same time in a clipboard? And I want to do an analysis of all of this information. Well, the way you would do that is you hold the shift key down on your keyboard, and then C is already selected. I click on A, and I click on B, and now you can see that all of the rubrics have been kind of linked or combined together and actually now this clipboard is called ABC so it's an integration of the rubrics which were in clipboards A, B, and C. If I click on clipboard number one over here you'll see it opens up a separate window altogether. Again let me reiterate you can't open up A, B, C, D independently of each other they're essentially linked together but you can look at all the rubrics grouped together in these clipboards. Here, clipboard number one, two, three, four, five, and six are a separate palette, separate series of clipboards. But I can move rubrics uh, from these various clipboards. So, for example, if I want to move, uh, let's say, um, embarrassment, I could click on it to select it and then hold my mouse button down and I could drag that over to clipboard number one and I could move that rubric. It still stays over here but I can move it and add it over to this clipboard. If I want to now delete it I could hit backspace on my keyboard and I could then remove it. Alright, so again holding the shift key down uh, if I click on clipboard number A here and I hold the shift key down I can add uh, different rubrics. Once you've got these rubrics in here combined together, you can't uh, eliminate them any longer. Uh, they're kind of stuck together. Uh, the only thing that you can do uh, is go back to one of the clipboards and then you can delete or add to it. So if I wanted to go to just one of the clipboards now, I could click on clipboard D here and then back to A and I'm back in A and then I could click on B and I could click on C. Okay.
All right, if I want to do an analysis, I'm going to do an analysis of, uh, let's say, A, B, and C. So I'm going to click on A, B, and C here. And if I want to do the analysis, I could either click on the graph here, or if I remember the keyboard command is being Control or Command 5, I could click on that. And now you'll see that I actually have a repertorization, an analysis of uh, all the uh, rubrics that are in clipboards uh, A, B, C, and D. Okay, uh, so uh, now if I want to move this, because I can't read all these words. If you've got a Macintosh computer, you simply click on the little graph here and you just drag it over. If you've got a Windows computer, you've got to hold down the control key, and while holding down the control key, you click and you just drag it over to the right, and now I can see more of the text, so I can see what this looks like. Okay, now I can I can read the entire name, the listing of the rubric here. Okay, and again I can move this down like this, so I can see what I'm I'm looking at. I can also at any point eliminate uh, um, rubrics uh, right from the analysis uh, if I want. I can simply click uh, on a particular rubric. Let's say I want to get rid of uh, this one here. A foppish, elegant dandy, for example. Okay, I could click on it uh, to select it. And I'm sorry, no. You hold the Alt key down, and while you're holding the Alt key down, you click on it. And uh, oh, I guess I have to only do this from one rubric at clipboard at a time. So I'm going to go back out of D, and I'll click back on A. And now, if I want to eliminate this, let's say I want to get rid of this fear of being embarrassed. See, I click on it with my Alt key down, and now it, it eliminates it. So again, when I've got all the, um, the rubrics together into different clipboards combined, then I don't have that ability to eliminate uh, the way that I was just showing you. I can only do that with one clipboard at a time. Okay. Um, so again, if you're in the analysis, you want to get rid of a, a clipboard, a rubric, you can hold the Alt key down and you can click on it. Uh, if you've got a Macintosh computer, uh, it's actually Alt and the Option key, and then you click, and it removes it. But actually, in most cases, I think better than uh, removing an entire rubric, I think what's really preferable is to simply uh, eliminate it temporarily, okay, or to change the intensity or the degree of the rubric. So once you're in the clip uh, clipboard here, let's say I want to make, I say this um, uh, talking when embarrassed to me is a really important symptom. I can click on it over here on the clipboard and I could type the number three on my keyboard and now that rubric is a three underlined both in the clipboard and in the analysis window. If I decide, you know what, actually I think it's a two, I click the number two and now it becomes a two. Or I click the one, it becomes a one. Maybe I say, you know what, I don't want it to be underlined at all. I type the number zero and it's now a zero. Okay, So very easy to change the intensity of the rubrics uh, right in the clipboards uh, and have it impact the analysis right away. You can also, if you want, say, you know what, I actually would like to just eliminate this rubric for right now. I don't want it to be considered in my analysis. You simply select the rubric you don't want to be considered and you hit the uh, minus key on your keyboard and when you do that, it strikes through the rubric and now you can see this rubric is struck through in my repertorization. In other words, it's not, it's not, right now it's not affecting the analysis. And so I can play around a little bit. I can say, you know what, I don't want to try this one or this one. Uh, if I remember, if I want to do two at the same time, I can hold the control key down. So I'll, I'll select these two here by holding the control or command key. And again, I'll hit the negative sign. And now I've got three rubrics that are no longer being considered. Okay. If I want to undo this at any time, I simply hit the zero on my keyboard and that undoes it. And if I want to undo this one, I select this one and I type zero and that's undone as well. Okay, So very easy to basically uh, do whatever you want in terms of changing intensities, looking at the effect that a particular rubric has on your representation, removing it, adding it back, changing things around, really playing around so that you see things the way that you'd like to. Okay, uh, You can also combine rubrics. So again, you can do this with the, the keyboard by dragging it over to this little uh, item over here. But I think the best way to, to combine rubrics really is just by uh, using your, your keyboard. So let's say I want to combine uh, rubric number two and rubric number three. I'm going to hold the control or command 
key down on my keyboard and I'm going to click on number two. I've got now two and three selected. And now I simply hit the plus key on my keyboard and this little window pops up. It says enter a name for the merged rubric. So I'll just call it whatever, embarrassed. Uh, I'll call it embarrassed, uh, two S's. Combined, okay, so you know it's a combined rubric. You call whatever you'd like. And then I click OK. And now I've got this new rubric, which I've now created, called Embarrassed Combined. And you'll notice that these two now have been basically X'd out. I can uh, click on these, okay, and uh, type 0 and add them back in if I want. Or I can uh, delete them altogether. If I want to get rid of this one, I simply highlight it and then hit delete or backspace on my keyboard and remove it altogether. So I have a great deal of flexibility for moving around. And whatever I do in the clipboard that's up here, I can immediately see the impact of that in my program over here. Okay, so maybe now I've got my repertorization uh, and I'd like to, you know, uh, quickly look at some keynotes for these various remedies. So uh, I could just take, for example, the remedy, the first one here is Amber Grecia, okay, and I could, uh, I could click on that, okay, and highlight it, and I could drag Amber Grecia over to the little key here, and I could let go, and you'll see uh, it opens up my default uh, repertory, my keynote repertory, and now I've got a description of Amber Grecia. Now I want you to notice, I'm going to move this down a little bit so you can see here, move it over here to the to the left here. So you see the first remedy is amber grease here, then I've got opium, and then I've got lanthanide, mercury, uh, this, these are bowel nozodes. So some of these are common remedies, some are not, okay? You'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner that I've got um, this little icon here. It says switch, uh, change to next remedy. Okay, so the first remedy here is Amber Greasy, and if I click on the little arrow here to the right, the next remedy is the remedy that comes next in my repertorization. It's opium, okay, in Berkey's Materia Medica, okay, and if I click on the arrow again, the next one, which of course this remedy here, this lanthanide, is not in Berkey, so it skips over it, but it goes to the next remedy, mercury, and then if I click again, it goes to colosynthesis, and then phosphoric acid, and then platina, and it will literally move me through uh, all of the remedies in my repertorization so that I can read a description and a comparison of all the remedies, rather than having to, you know, in a very uh, convoluted and complex way, having to go to, uh, you know, the Materia Medica and read them. I can read them in the sequence in which they're found in my analysis. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what about some of these remedies that uh, didn't show up? Well, I can also switch books. So let me go back to, I'm going to left click now to go back to uh, Amber Grecia. And now I'm going to click uh, in the little center icon here that says switch books. By the way, in the bottom right hand corner, you've got this little key here. Remember, in the bottom right hand corner, these icons allow you to switch to other repertories. And by the way, these here at the top are the ones that were used most recently. That's why they're not listed alphabetically. But here I can go ahead and switch to any other repertory. Uh, that's contained in McRepertory. Okay? All right. So, um, oops, I got out of that window. Let me go back. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> but I want to maybe look at some of these remedies that were not in Berkey's pocket manual. So what I do now is I take my mouse and I bring it over to the icon between the two arrows and I click on this. Okay? And now it's it's got a little key icon and if I click to change to the next book, it will actually go through Amber Grecia and show me Amber Grecia for all of those books. Okay? So now, instead of moving through each remedy in the repertorization, I'm able to read Amber Grecia in all the different books. If I click again on this, okay, to go back to the graph, it moves me back through the remedies. Okay. If I want to find, for example, a one that did not come up in Berkey's, I'm going to close this window here. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, Bungaris fasciatus. Okay. I could click on Bungaris fasciatus, highlight it, bring it over to the key, and now you can see. Well, it's not in Kent's lectures. Okay. So I'm going to click on this little icon in the middle here to switch to the books. And now, if I click, it's going to bring up all of the books that have Bungaris fasciatus, okay? And you can see it's not quite, a, this is the bandit crate, it's a snake remedy. 
and you can see it's not too much information about it, but there is a little bit here, and I'm able to move through uh, the different pieces of information. You'll find more information about some of these remedies in reference works. But this is a very nice little feature. Also, uh, if I close this, uh, let's find a, a different one here. Uh, maybe, uh, let's say try uh, Digitalis, for example. If I bring Digitalis over to the key, okay, uh, now I can click over here. Since I've got the key icon uh, set up in the middle here, if I click on it, I can move through and I can see all of the different books that have information about Digitalis. Okay. Uh, also, there's a little eye here, and if you click on that, it'll oftentimes open up uh, a little PDF that will give you information, additional information about that particular remedy. Oftentimes, it'll show you a little picture, give you um, information about the substance itself, uh, the, the common names, botanical information, and things along those lines. So that's what that little eye does down here in the bottom. Uh, and again, you can click over here and change to any, uh, any other a key notebook that you would like that can, that's contained in your repertory software. Okay, now uh, there's also uh, in this program uh, different uh, analysis strategies, different uh, analysis schemes. So let's look at that uh, really quickly. Uh, you can see here there's this little kind of uh, dividing sign here and this allows you to select different strategies. So I'm going to click on this and you can see you've got this what's called this expert analysis. Uh, what's called the automated mix. These are strategies which were created uh, combining a number of different analysis strategies to, to produce um, results based on the needs of particular practitioners. Number of rubrics would be the strategy that would show you the remedies that cover the most number of rubrics uh, in your repertorization. Prominent remedies, that would be the strategy which would show you uh, the remedies that were reflected best in the rubrics where the, re the remedies were really prominent. In other words, if you had selected the rubric uh, Mind Hatred Unmoved by Apologies, uh, there's only one remedy in that rubric. Uh, it's nitric acid, and it's in bold type. So it's in a high degree. Uh, there's no other remedies, therefore it's very prominent. And if you had selected that rubric, it would give greater weight or consideration to nitric acid. Uh, for example, if you had chosen the rubric Delusion, he is the uh, object of, uh, of God's vengeance. Again, that's a very small rubric, uh, depending on which repertory you're looking at, you might only have one or two remedies in that rubric, but Calibromatum will be in bold type. And if you had chosen that rubric, it would give Calibromatum greater consideration or weight in the analysis. So this has to do with the fact that the remedies are more prominent. They're, they're in smaller rubrics, more characteristic types of symptoms, and they're very strongly clinically confirmed for that particular symptom. Degrees of remedies in the repertory, generally speaking, should be an indication of clinical confirmation. That's not entirely true uh, in the therapeutic pocketbook repertory. Uh, it was possible if a remedy had come up very strongly uh, in, a, in a proving to, uh, to be assigned a degree of two, uh, but in Kent's schematic, generally speaking, at least according to his philosophy, uh, this should always be clinically confirmed information. Now, in reality, it doesn't really turn out that way, but theoretically, that's how it should be. The next uh, strategy is called small remedies, and again, this is a strategy uh, um, that would give greater weight to smaller remedies. Let's go ahead and click this to see what happens. You can see I click on it, and I get a com really completely different listing of remedies, uh, remedies like uh, mercury and ambergris simply disappear from my repertorization and now I get much more unusual remedies that are much less represented in the repertory. I can have something called small remedies and small rubrics. This is actually one that I actually created which combines uh, both small remedies and small rubrics. Uh, that's very interesting to me because uh, rubrics that are smaller uh, tend to be more characteristic. Uh, not always, but oftentimes, depending on how you define characteristic and aphorism 153, there's uh, different opinions about that, but generally speaking, that would be one definition of what a, a, small, a small rubric might uh, indicate in a case. And so I actually created that by going up to uh, this area here called design strategies, where I actually I'm able to take different strategies and combine them together and make whatever strategy I would like. That's more of an advanced feature. We're not going to cover it in today's session, but just so you know, that is a possibility. Uh, and then you've got small rubrics and then uh, totality. 
Okay, so these are all different strategies. You can play around with them, use them in different ways, and uh, you know, come up with uh, whatever uh, appropriate strategy you want. You can you can make as many of these as you would like, and I'll show you how to do that in one of our in our one of our future sessions. I'll go ahead and click back on expert analysis. Now, also at the very top of the graph window, you've got a number of uh, different little icons here, and you've also got to the left of them this little. Uh, downward arrow, uh, this essentially is a reflection of the little pictograms that we see here. So whatever you have as pictograms here, you'll see reflected over here. Okay. So let's look at these. We've got what's called the waffle graph. The next one over is what's called the waffle graph with no themes. I'm going to show you the themes in just one second. Okay, Waffle graph with no themes. And so you'll see the difference between waffle graph and waffle graph with no themes. The next one over is called the numbered graph. Uh, uh, actually, let me uh, click this one, and then uh, this is, oops, let me clear the limits. Uh, this is a uh, numbered graph, okay. Uh, let's see, what am I doing here? This is small remedies. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a uh, multi-graph of strategies where it shows you all of the strategies. So you can see expert analysis. Automatic mix, totality, number of rubrics, prominent remedies, small rubrics, and small remedies. Uh, then you've got one here called scatter graph. And basically what this one shows you is it shows you that on the left-hand side the number of rubrics that the remedy is found in. And on the right-hand side, this is a kind of like an XY axis, uh, how small the remedy is. So if you've got a remedy in the upper right-hand corner, that's really strong because it means that it's a small remedy. It's not well represented in the repertory, and yet at the same time, it's uh, it's in a lot of rubrics. So the more it's up in the upper right-hand corner, the better it is in terms of consideration. Obviously, uh, repertorization is not the final judge of the remedy that we prescribe. We always go back to the Materia Medica and we choose the remedy that best covers, based on its description in our literature, the totality of the characteristic symptoms of our case. The, uh, the next item here is a little mineral icon. I'm going to go back to the regular graph over here. Um, and if you click on this, it's going to limit your repertorization just to the minerals and elements. If you click on this one, it's going to limit it to just the plants. Uh, just the animals. This will undo those restrictions. Uh, this one here will show you uh, all of the different general groupings that exist, okay, and how they're represented. Uh, this one will show you the uh, Rajan Sankaran miasms, uh, and then this one here will show you. Uh, this is one I actually created, uh, which is called. You can move this around a little bit if you want, but this is uh, what's called the city graph. And uh, I, I created this one later. But again, I'm not going to show you how to make your own graphs. You can do this later on. Uh, you can take any existing uh, graphs and you can modify them and manufacture whatever you would like. Okay, it's really nice to play around with this stuff and and see the different results. Okay, and uh, you can find quite a bit of information in there. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> next thing I would like to show you is the uh, theme tool, which I think is a very interesting tool. And basically what the theme tool does, it allows you to find really major themes in the case uh, and basically say in your analysis that, that the, the remedies have got to be in these themes, that that's going to supersede all of the smaller rubrics in your case. Let me give you a, a concrete uh, da daily example that might happen. Let's say, for example, that my daughter got lost out in a big crowd and I want you to help me find her. Well, I could tell you that, you know, oftentimes she wears a yellow shirt, and sometimes she carries around with her, uh, um, you know, uh, Agatha Christie novels, and also sometimes she wears a hat. And you could try to go into this crowd of, let's say, a thousand people and try to find her, but it, it would be very difficult because she may or may not, on that particular day, be wearing a yellow shirt or wearing a hat or carrying an Agatha Christie novel with her. And also, there may be a lot of other people out there who've got hats, uh, who are wearing yellow shirts, probably not a lot that, we're, that are carrying the Agatha Christie novel, but you get my idea. It would, be, it would not be probably the most prudent way to help identify my daughter if she was lost in a large crowd. But if I told you that she was a teenage girl 
of let's say 17 years of age, uh, that she had blonde hair, uh, that she was uh, a girl. Uh, those larger ideas would help you to narrow down your choices right away. You, you would be looking only for like a, a teenage girl around 17 years of age. You'd be looking only for the blonde-haired girls. Uh, you'd only you know you'd only you'd only be looking for for girls and not boys. And those larger ideas would help you to narrow down your choices. And then from within that grouping, you might be looking for the one who's wearing a yellow shirt or carrying an Agatha Christie book and or you know wearing a hat. So this is how you know we can think about our cases as well. We look for these larger themes or ideas that we want to make sure the remedy covers, and then the smaller symptomology uh, will be taken into consideration secondarily. So let's actually, I'm not going to use this particular clipboard A here to give you this example. Let me go to clipboard B. Ah, good, because I got some small kind of unusual symptoms here in clipboard B. And I'm going to go ahead now and create uh, some themes. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the, uh, the little T here, okay? And I'm going to make a theme called, uh, let's call it uh, ambition, okay? The person is really ambitious, okay? So ambition, okay? And I'll click OK. And now I've created a, a theme called ambition. It doesn't have any remedies in it yet, but it's there. And I'll create another one. Uh, let's call this other one, I don't know, money, okay? Let's say money is a really big issue for this person. We'll do that. We'll click OK and we create money. And now I'll click on this T again. And let's make one called, uh, let's say embarrassment. Embarrassments are a really big issue for this person, okay? Embarrassment, okay? So now I've got my, my three uh, different major themes, and I've got some strange, rare, and more unusual types of symptoms. Aphrism 153, striking strange characteristic signs and symptoms of the disease type symptoms, okay? And now I'm going to go back to my, uh, my repertory. I'm going to close uh, the keynotes here, and I'll minimize my analysis to get rid of it, okay? Uh, and I'll close this as well. And now I'm back in my repertory, and now I want to find, um, you know, embarrassment. So I'm going to go to the bottom here, and I'll type in the word embarrassment. Okay. And now it limits it to just embarrassment. And I'm going to take uh, these embarrassment rubrics, and I'm going to put them underneath this theme called embarrassment. I could search through the structure of the repertory and do this, or I could limit my analysis uh, my repertory to just the rubrics that have this word in it, okay? Uh, so I'm going to take, let's say I'm going to choose embarrassment, I'm going to drag this over, and I'm going to put it right below where I get this little TH appearing, right when I put it right below the word embarrassment. And then I'm going to let go, and you can see that now has, this has been moved, and now I've got 42 remedies in the theme for embarrassment. And maybe I'll also take this larger one here called uh, ailments aggravated from embarrassment. So I'll take that one, I'll click on that, and I'll, I'll drag that one over as well, and I'll put it right underneath where it's, there's a TH, and I'll let go. And, and by the way, if you screw up, I'm going to show you. Let me put another one in here. I'll click on this one, I'll hold my mouse, and let's say I, I, I put it at the wrong level, okay? I put that at the right level, but let's say I didn't. Oh, let me get another one here. Uh, let's say I put it at the same level here. Oh, you see what I did? I actually put it in as a rubric. Oh my God, you see, I didn't actually put it underneath the theme embarrassment. I put it under I, as its own rubric. Well, I can always click on it here, select it, and then hold my mouse button down and drag it underneath and add it. Okay, so very easy to add it back again. So now I've got my embarrassment theme. Let me uh, get rid of that. Okay, and I'll, uh, I'll just add a, a rubric in here. I'm going to click here, left arrow to get out, and I'll type in um, fear, okay, right arrow, poverty, Okay, and I'll take this, and I'll drag this over under money, and I'll do, uh, let's say, left arrow to get rid of fear, I'll type in avarice, okay, and I'll take in avarice, and I'll click on that, and I'll drag it over here, and put it under money, there's avarice, and let me do uh, ambition down here, I'll type in A-M-B-I-T-I-O-N, ambition, and limit to just the words that have ambition, and I'll select a few of these. Doesn't matter really, okay, for the purpose of our example. I'll just select a few, okay, and then I'll click and I'll drag those over and I'll put them right underneath ambition so the TH appears and I've added those. And now I've created these themes and I'll let me get rid of this little um, limitation here. And now you can see I've created these themes. And now when I do Control or Command 5 to open up my analysis, you can see that in my repertorization, I've got 
these themes and these themes the remedies have to be in these themes first and foremost this is the most important thing I want the remedies to be in here first and then the smaller strange rare and peculiar symptoms I can look and see of the remedies that cover these major themes how well they're reflected in these more strange rare and peculiar symptoms and again this goes back to that example I gave this is the yellow shirt and the Agatha Christie novel and the hat this is the fact that she's a girl that she's a teenager and that she's got blonde hair okay so this is a, a nice feature uh, easy to use and I think something that you'll you'll find um, uh, quite helpful uh, when you're working on a case. Now, if you want to save any of this information at any time, it's really easy to do. You simply go over to File, uh, and you, then you go to uh, click on New Patients Chart, or you can do uh, Control N and, and you uh, or Command N. And you give them the person a name. Let's say uh, Leslie. Oops, Leslie uh, Samuels. All right. And then we click on the Save button here. And now I've got my new patient. And to save any of this stuff here, I simply click on the window that I want to save. As soon as I click on that window, I simply go up to where it says File. And you can see there's a under the pull-down menu, it says Save Graph or Control-S, okay, or Command-S if you've got a Macintosh computer. So I just click on Control-S. And now <clears throat> when I click back on the patient file, you'll see now McRepertory Remedy Graph has now been added for this particular date. If I want to save the clipboard, I click on the clipboard over here, and again, I do Control-S, and it adds, or Command-S, and it adds that clipboard. If I click over here for the notes, and I type a little note here, you know, this, uh, this was a, a very difficult case to solve, but I did it. Three asterisk, three exclamation points. Okay, and uh, again, I do Control S. It saves the note or Command S. Okay, so again, whatever I am, if I'm in my clipboard, if I'm in my notes, if I'm in my graph, I just do Control S, Command S, and that automatically gets saved uh, with the appropriate date. <clears throat> the next time when I come back and then the patient, it's a different date, and I save it. Uh, it will be saved to a different date, and you can see down here, I can, by clicking over here, I can move between each date, each time where I've saved a graph or a set of clipboards um, or uh, uh, various notes that I've written about the case. Very easy to do, very simple, and very nice way to organize the information about your patients. By the way, you'll notice that when I saved the uh, clipboards over here, it saved A through D. Uh, so A through D gets automatically saved all together uh, for any clipboards. These are, again, linked. And the same thing through 1 through 6 would, would be saved as well. If I opened any uh, 1 through 6 and I saved it, it would save all of 1 through 6. These are kind of like blocks organized together. By the way, uh, when I was doing my search in the repertory over here and I was uh, clicking down here to search for a word, I was searching only in this particular repertory. It is possible in the program to search through all repertories. If I click on the search here, you'll see the search pull-down menu. You'll see that I can search for remedies. I can search for words. I can search for remedies and words. I can search for family groupings, and I can search for concepts. I'll go over all of these features uh, in other classes so that you can learn how to use them. Let me just show you, though, how they work very quickly. If I click on remedies and words here, you can see that I can combine any number of remedies. I can add multiple remedies, and I can choose whether it's plain, italics, bold, bold, italics, same grade, higher grade, and I can choose which authors I want to be selected, and I can also choose, if I click here on repertories, uh, which repertories, okay, I can uh, choose them all uh, or any any combination of them. If I, if I want, you know, just these five repertories to be extracted, I can do that or anything that I would like here, okay. Again, we'll go through this in more detail at a later time, but you can search through all repertories at the same time. You can also select the, the sections uh, that you want to search through as well. So you can see here that I can search through any number of sections. So combine any number of authors, sections, and repertories that I would like to search for. And I can combine that with remedies and words together, uh, offering me quite a bit of power and flexibility in terms of what the type of information I want to find. I can also do something called a concept search. Uh, 
I'll just really quickly show you that as well. That's Control J for remedies and words. Is Control F or Command F or Command J. So here's the concepts, and here you can see I've already did put one in here. Uh, again, we'll do this in more detail later. What I did is I I said let me search for the remedies belladonna, capsicum, hyoscyamus, stramonium with the word urinary, and if I click on the search button here, it's going to actually produce a very uh, interesting little graph for me where it's going to show me how these uh, three remedies show up relative to uh, urinary complaints, okay? Um, and I can even uh, change this where I can say, okay, I want to do it for foods, and I can look at how foods come up uh, relative for each of these remedies, alcohol, beer, bitter, brandy, bread, butter, cheese, uh, chocolate, coffee, or maybe I want to do it for uh, particular locations in the body, and I can see how particular locations will show up. And I can actually even see here uh, whether it's less represented relative to what it should be for its representation in the repertory or better represented. Okay, So I can see uh, you know, left, right, inner, outer, up, down. Uh, I can scroll across here and I can see you know, bronchial tubes, all the different parts of the body and how these various remedies are, rep are reflected relative to how they should be reflected based on their representation in the repertory. These are fascinating tools which are very useful for study. I can do times, sensations in the body, all kinds of different information. Again, we'll review this in more detail in a subsequent session. Okay, so um, now I'd like to just quickly look at reference works. We don't have too much time left, but just to show you a few things about reference works. Uh, it's a really incredibly powerful tool and it's really the only uh, material medical tool that I'm aware of that has the ability to really function as an analysis tool. Uh, it doesn't just simply allow you to access information, but it really functions as an analysis tool. Again, you have a similar tool palette here that functions just very similar to the way it does in McRepertory. You've got the Windows pull-down menu uh, that shows you the different types of um, windows that can appear here. Again, we'll go over this in more detail at a later time. And you've got the, um, the search pull-down menu that shows you different types of searches that can be done. Let me just show you one quick example of how flexible the searches are in ReferenceWorks. So let's say, for example, that I would like to find uh, the words fear. I'll type in the word fear. And then I want to find that word fear within three words of the word dark. So I simply type the number three on my keyboard, and a three appears. And then I type in the word dark. But maybe I think to myself, you know what, maybe there's other um, words besides fear that I should think about. So I just make sure that my cursor is right after the word fear, and I've got this little ampersand icon right over here, and if I click on it, it gives me all kinds of related words that I could think about. Oh, afraid. Well, that might be a good one. I could click on afraid, and let's see if there's any others that would be, or, you know, or maybe anxious. I'll select those two. Um, and uh, you know, I could scroll down here, maybe uh, cowardice, uh, dread, okay? And I could either replace these words with fear, re substitute them, or I could add them. Well, I'm going to add them. I'm going to click on the Add button, and now you can see I've got fear or afraid or anxious or coward or dread within three words of the word dark, okay? I'll do the same thing with the word dark. Let me close this window. I'll click, put my cursor right after the word dark. I'll click on the ampersand sign. And now for dark, let me just go down and I'll choose, let's say, just the word night here. Uh, so here's the word night. I'll choose a night and I'll add that. So I've got fear or afraid or anxious or coward or dread within three words of dark or night. Okay? And then I'm going to put my cursor right after the word night. And now. I'm going to hit the spacebar key on my keyboard. I'll hit it once, twice, I've got it within a sentence, three times within a paragraph, four times within a section, five times within a remedy. In other words, I want to find fear or afraid or anxious or coward or dread within three words of the words dark or night in the same remedy as, okay, in the, in the same remedy as, um, let's say, pain within three words of leg, okay? And let's say, let's try the ampersand again for leg, so I'll click on the ampersand, and now I can say, okay, thigh, that looks good, I'll add that, I'll add thigh, and I can even do related words, I can do more general words, 
like limb, for example, um, uh, more specific words like uh, uh, Shanksmere, whatever, uh, has parts, okay, like, okay, I can see uh, foot and chin, I'll add those two, okay, and you've even got little definitions down here as well, okay, so I can do all this, and now I've got a very complex search, I've got fear or afraid, or anxious, or coward, or dread within three words of dark or night in the same remedy as a pain within three words of leg, shin, foot, or thigh. Imagine you have a patient who comes in and they got a real fear of the dark of the night and they also have a pain in their leg or specifically in their shin or their foot or their thigh, the whole body. Here you could do a very complex search and now once I've got all this information in here and I've got my cursor after all of this stuff, I simply hit enter or return on my keyboard and it takes this very complex search and it produces a result for me over here on the right hand side. It's always centered so that I can see the actual center of the text. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit here, you can see I'll eventually I'll get this is a I'll eventually that's just introductions and stuff, but here I get the first remedy, Abertonum. Uh, that's the remedy in the section, it's in the general section, and here it tells me the book that I'm in. Okay. And now I can see, you know, painting night. And if I want to go to one of these uh, particular things, I simply uh, click on it. Well, depending on your pro how your program is set up, it might be a click or double click, and it will open up. And now I'm right in that section uh, for that particular remedy. If I want to move through the words, I simply hit the tab key on my keyboard. You can see night and anxious were together there within three words, and I can tab, and it will move me through all of the instances that I have where these words are coming up together like this and I will move through all the books in this manner okay so it allows me to do a very uh, interesting search where I can move through and read about all kinds of different information uh, for uh, whatever types of searches that I've done okay and again I can uh, move this like this make it bigger I can click on the bottom here uh, and change it just to a remedy information or just book information Okay, so uh, last thing I want to show you, we're, we're, unfortunately we're running out of time here, but again, we'll go through more of this in more detail. By the way, when you do this, uh, just so you know, I click on the clipboard here, it actually creates a rubric right away, and I can actually take this rubric and I can bring it over to my repertory program. So if I go over to edit here, uh, you can see there's an item that says export rubric or control E, and if I click on it, and then I go alt tab, to go back to McRepertory and let's say I go to clipboard uh, C here, okay, and then I do uh, control V. I've actually added this rubric uh, that I searched for to my McRepertory program. So I can exchange information just the way when I'm in my McRepertory program, I can right click on a remedy like Orem and say view remedy in reference works. I can also create rubrics in reference works and bring them back over into McRepertory. I'm going to just do that now, view remedy in reference works. Search for it in reference works and now you can see I'm in this little tab here for Materia Medica. Uh, that's uh, basically this little book tab over here and now I've got Orem and I've got all the books uh, that have information about Orem. Let's say I want to read about Orem and Kent, I would simply type in K-E-N-T Oops, and I'll, I'm sorry, i got to do that again, Let me go back, Orem, books, ah, screwed up, okay. The way this works, let me just show you, is if, you're, if you've got a little book icon at the top here and you click on it, uh, now it shows you all the remedies. If you click on the remedy icon, it shows you all the books. So remedies, books, remedies, books, okay. Let's say I want to find Orem. So I click on the remedy icon and I type in A-U-R, okay, and now I find uh, Orem, Orem Metallicum here, okay, I click on it, and now I'm in Orem Metallicum, and now I've got all of the books that have Orem Metallicum. If I want to find that in Kent, I just type in K-E-N-T, and now I find Orem in Kent, okay. So that's basically how you can move around. Again, we'll go through this in, in more detail later. Uh, there's quite a bit more to show you, but I hopefully this gave you a, a quick introduction to the program and a sense of the power of what this product is capable of doing.